Why do you think there's been such this, I don't want to say resurgence, but surge in interest this year? Is it just money printing and deflation and global currencies? Yeah, Brian, well, uh, Bitcoin never sleeps. So that, that's the easy soundbite. Uh, and it Sounds is like a, movie. a global phenomenon. Yeah, it does like a good movie, right? Uh, it's a global phenomenon. Look, we have the perfect storm for, for why Bitcoin is, is doing so well and why it will continue to do so well. Uh, look, we have aging demographics in the Western world. We have massive debt, massive personal debt, massive corporate debt, massive government debt. And it's getting worse with all the impact of COVID and some of the things you were just talking about on the show before. And then uh, the response from central banks is to print money. And when you print more of something, what happens to its value? It goes down. So Bitcoin is one of the only sound monies on the planet. You have, you have silver, uh, and now you have digital gold, Bitcoin. And so when a scarce asset is compared to a not scarce asset, uh, we have what, what we call the fiat fiasco. And it's been going on really since the 70s. And if you look at the value of money, it's continued to, to be destroyed by the creation of it. And Bitcoin does the opposite, right? We know how much Bitcoin is going to be created every day uh, for the next 140 years. And it's controlled by math, not by individuals. I'll, I'll push back a bit, Mark, because I, I've not, I've, you know, my colleagues, with all due respect to them, they call it a cryptocurrency. I try to avoid that term. I don't think currencies should move like this. Maybe it's a commodity. Is it, is it money? Because, because you can knock the dollar, you can knock the euro, you can knock, you know, the yuan, but they don't move 5,000% in five years. Maybe if you're in the Weimar Republic in the 30s or Zimbabwe or Argentina, whatever it might be, is it a currency? Or is it an asset class? Uh, look, it's a fantastic point, Brian. And, and think about what it is, right? It, it's programmable money. And when money is young, money is very volatile. Think about when the dollar was first used. It had wild swings because really people didn't know what it was. Uh, you know, the dollar's only been around since the 1700s. It's, it's really a very young currency. And currencies over time have been spectacularly volatile, as you said. Uh, think about things like Zimbabwe or, or Argentina, or now Argentina, Venezuela, just the last two years, the Bolivar. So what happens with money is, is it becomes accepted based on custom. Um, but you're absolutely right. Where we started with Bitcoin is as a commodity, just like gold. Gold has commodity characteristics, but it has monetary characteristics. People think of it as the commodity that comes out of the ground, but gold for 5,000 years has been a perfect store of value, right? One ounce has bought a fine man's suit, like the one you're wearing today, for you know 5,000 years, from Egyptian times to the Revolutionary War to today, Savu Row, 1,500 bucks for a nice man's suit. So Bitcoin is just the digital form of that. And so in these early days, when people think of it as a commodity, yeah. And people think of it as a scarce asset. It's going to have more volatility. But over time, we'll see that it becomes digital money. And part of Bitcoin is that, and for and listen, a lot of people know it, a lot of people don't, so I'm just going to kind of speak level, is that there's about 21 million that will ultimately exist. Right. I think about 18 and a half or just under 19 million have currently been mined or found or whatever parlance you right. want to use. Right. What happens when all 21 million our mind, does it become like the art market in a way, in, in some respects, Mark? If there's no more that you can do and mine, does it then become like a Porsche or a Bordeaux? You see where I'm going with this? Yeah. Oh, look, you know, it's, you bring up a really important point that the best performing asset over the last decade is not stocks. It's actually not even Bitcoin, which Bitcoin outperformed stocks dramatically over 10 years. It's actually collectible Porsches, right? Because there's only three guys in the world that buy them. Jerry Seinfeld, Jay Leno, and this guy, John Shirley, but uh, ex-Microsoft. And so when there's limited supply, right, you can't make more vintage Porsches and rising demand, prices rise. So the price will continue to rise for Bitcoin forever. Now, what will happen over time is we'll split into units of measure called Satoshis, eight decimal places, we have 100 billion uh, Satoshis. And so if you think about any scarce asset, this has to do with what's called the stock to flow ratio, the new flow of an asset relative to its stock. Look at the dollar. The U.S. dollar mm -hmm. 
we have massive new flow compared to the stock. So it's depreciating, it's devaluing, and it's only going to get worse. If you look at gold or silver, not a lot of new flow to stock. Bitcoin actually is the scarcest asset in the world based on that stock to flow measure. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.